Shruti Jivaraj is a leader with more than 12 years of experience in human resource, corporate training, program management, communication and TV journalism with leading corporate entities. She has worked with the training and development units of HP and Infosys and different television production houses. With an MBA in human resource management, masters in psychology and diploma in communication and journalism, Shruti has career interest around corporate HR and communication and student career counselling. She joined Manipal University Dubai in October 2013 and since then has been actively involved in grooming Manipal students for the corporate world. Hello ma'am, thank you so much for coming to Studio 60 Live. Thank Hello, you for inviting me. Thank ma'am, my first question is, uh, what inspired you or what drew you to, uh, to enter this field? Um, so like you just mentioned, you know, when you were introducing, you mentioned that I have uh, had hands-on experience in yeah. training and development as such. So I've been with adult learners and uh, the exposure or the experience that I got while training the adult learners is that most of them join the industry without having proper guidance, you know. Okay. Once they get into the industry is when they realize, oh no, this is not what I was supposed mm -hmm. to do. And I've also realized that most of these corporates that I've also worked with, you know, they have like a career architecture. There is a grid. So if I am getting in for a role, there are certain competencies that I need to have so that yeah. I perform better in that role. Mm -hmm. What most of these employees would realize at a very late uh, time in their life is that maybe they were not cut out for the role. Yeah. And, and so this is something that I, you know, observed. And when I moved to Dubai, I had this opportunity that came my way with Manipal University to work as a career counselor or as a placement officer where I could actually help students even before they get into the industry. And I thought, yeah. why not grab the opportunity? Yeah. Yeah. So ma'am, according to you, what, are the, what is the process required for campus placement? Okay, so now mm -hmm. when you say campus placement, the campus placement is a two-pronged approach. You have something for the recruiter, okay, and then you have something for the students as such. Now, I'll start with the recruiter. We've got a very robust mechanism. We start off uh, with a placement talk where the placement office would actually initiate a conversation with the interested uh, organization. Mm -hmm. We understand their needs as to what their need is really all about. We probably get them to write to us and you know so that there's something very clear to us. What we then do is we uh, actually ask the maybe the interested recruiter if time permits that they mm. come and do a presentation to the students, yeah. uh, you know, the, the particular batch that they would be interested in or the discipline that they would be interested in. And from there on, it the, the actual recruitment process starts where we start sourcing profiles from different uh, disciplines and these profiles are then sent to the recruiter. The recruiter will filter from their end and maybe then say, okay, these are the students that I would like to interview. And then we probably facilitate either uh, an interview in the campus or maybe at their venue, depending on convenience. Mm -hmm. Now, that's about the recruiter. What comes here is the next, the students, right? Yeah. Um, okay, so, so, so let me be very honest. Okay, now, when I took over, what we've seen is that in silos, we had recruitment processes that existed in different disciplines. What we're trying to do here now is have a central team which will manage the placement and recruitment services for our students. We started off with an online registration. Okay, mm -hmm. We've got, let's say, in June 2014, we'll have about 300 odd students graduating. Yep. We started off by understanding that there are students who, some of them want to go in for a placement in the region, some go back for higher education, yep. some uh, go back to their country, you know, from wherever they come from. So the first step was to identify the group that you want to work with. So we started off an online registration. We got the students to register if you are interested in the career and placement services. So I have a group that I work with. And my target is 100% placement of these students. Now, when I say 100% placement, what I say is I will give you an interview opportunity. Uh, I will also allow you to maybe make a selection of an acceptance or a rejection of an offer that comes your way. Mm. But that's probably that's it, you know, that yeah. I, we can't go beyond yeah, that. Course, so, yeah. so that's that's the process. Now, of course, yes, while I'm sourcing profiles and while students come to me and I'm sending them for a, for an interview or whatever, there is a lot of grooming that happens. Like mm. when we participated in a career fair, there was a grooming session that we did. We filtered students. We took the cream of the lot. We filtered them doing a mock interview. We ensured that we kind of facilitate another session, which is like, how do you really 
answer some of the basic questions that a recruiter asks, what are, yeah. the, what are the different kinds of interviews. So there are a lot of session, personal grooming sessions that happens mm -hmm. before a student is really ready to go and face the interviewer. Right? Okay. So ma'am, according to you, what are the qualifications you expect in a student for an internship or a job? I think it really has to start from the point like about six or eight months before you're about to finish your degree yeah. and it really has to start with focus right yeah. a lot of students my experience tells me a lot of students take up a degree because there's parent pressure mm -hmm. sometimes it's their passion mm -hmm. and so they take it up sometimes it's peer pressure you know because somebody else is doing my friends are doing yeah. it so let me yeah. do it I think by the time you're about to finish your degree you really need to be clear on is this really what you want to get into mm -hmm. yeah. right or do you want to pursue higher education? So it starts from focus, right? The next is being able to identify what is it that a recruiter would look for. So if I'm a media student, yeah. what are the skills and competencies that a media student should have so that I am the pick for the recruiter? So you start developing on those things. Yeah. Next is, of course, I would say, I think six months before you graduate, you should have your CV ready. Of course. Yeah. Filtered, done, vet by multiple people, feedback taken, implemented, all of it ready along with maybe if, if the role that you're looking for requires you to have like a CD copy of your work, mm -hmm. maybe have that as well ready so that you have the, the edge over the other students. So I think mm -hmm. these are some of the things that you need to have. And then of course there are role specific skills that you need. Mm -hmm. But believe me girls, this is something which is trainable. And you can't be, as much as you think that you're ready out yeah. for the industry, you really can't be ready because each organization has a different requirement. Yeah. And, and a lot of organizations are willing to invest their time and effort with you. Yes. So those skills and proficiencies are something that you can develop while you get into the career. But some of the things that you can do as an individual is what I just listed before. Yeah. Yeah. So ma'am, according to you, how important is an internship to get a job? Very. Uh, so as a fresher, what do you have on your CV? You have your basic details, you have your educational qualification. An internship allows you, A, to make your CV a little more meaty, mm -hmm. right? Because it gives you, okay, so that's, that's the superficial part of it. Like yeah. your CV looks appealing and there's something for you to write in that. The other is the, the hands-on experience that you get. And, yeah. and there is nothing comparable to that because, um, I'm sure by now you know, with you know all the little exposure that you all get, university setup is a shelled environment, right? We are in this cocoon where we're learning something from our faculty. We're trying to do, we're trying to implement it in the simulation setup that we have in our college. But there is, whatever said and done, there is a huge gap between what the industry requires versus what you get to do here in in a in a learning setup like this. Yeah. And I think that is really what internship mm. gives you, dirtying mm. your hands with really what is it that you want to do. Besides, there are a lot of learners, you know, each learner has a learning modality. Yeah. You learn uh, in an audio way, you probably yeah. have a visual preference, you have a kinesthetic preference where you like to do things. Now, maybe some of the disciplines give you that setup, but some mm. may not. Mm. So I think an internship is a must. I think it should be like, a, uh, even if it is not a mandate, I think every student should try and get that exposure uh, where you go out in the industry, understand the gap between what you've been learning versus what is it that the industry requires. Mm -hmm. Also being able to implement what you learn in a classroom setup mm -hmm. back in the industry. And there is so much that you learn when you are out there. Uh, this is really like the core competency that I'm talking about. The other thing that you get to learn when you go in for an internship is the work culture, yeah. right? You are all students. When you go out as, as a corporate, uh, for lack of better terms, maybe a media student may not be called a corporate, but uh, when you go out in the industry, th there is a totally different requirement there. The culture there, the environment is so much different than what you see every day in a college setup. And I think that's also as much as a need uh, than just, just learning something in a classroom setup. So according to you, what pointers would you want to give to those people who have not done any internship or don't have any work experience in order to get a better job? I'll start with the first one, discipline. Mm. 
Yeah. Okay. When I say discipline, I mean the, I'll go back to the point six or eight months when you know it's that's all that you have in the college, you start disciplining your life. Yeah. And when I say disciplining your life, it starts from personal grooming, right? College life, good, happy go lucky kinds. You know, you you walk in the college, maybe in your bathroom slippers, you <laughs> you stay the way you yes. are, it's okay. But you need to move on, right? People out there that's not what you want to be portrayed as. So it starts with your personal grooming, discipline, bringing in discipline in your life. Yeah. Like, you know, if you have somebody who used to get up at like 7.38 in the morning or maybe 9 in the morning, no, that's not the time. You start, you, you know, you need to, your body clock has to change now because there's yeah. something else waiting for you outside. So it starts from there. And then, you know, it, it's the other things like building your network. Right, six months before you start graduate, before you're about to graduate, you build your network. There is so much that a college can support. There is so much that a faculty can support. There is so much a placement cell can support. You need to also build your own network. You need to understand what's happening in the industry. What is my value? Try and talk to your seniors. Find out. Okay, if I'm a fresher, what am I going to be sold at? You know, I mean, what what is my value in the market? Do yeah. I ask for maybe four grants? Do I ask for seven grants? Can I ask for ten? Is that the trend right now? Understand what is it that they, they are looking for freshers from freshers when they graduate, you know, and try and do an introspection. Where am I lacking? Start working towards those things. Create your CV. I think it's high time, six months left for you to graduate, create your CV, work on your CV. Those are basic things that you need to do. Learn from your mistakes as long as you're not making similar mistakes again, right? Yeah. Try and see if you can get mock interview expose experience, you know, try and see if you can just walk into a company and see how they evaluate you. You know, try and get those things, even if you're not going to be taking up that. So those are some of the things, but I think above all, it is also focus and direction. You know, don't take up anything just because everybody else is doing it, yeah. right? If you're not mentally ready and if you think that you're not ready for an industry yet, mm -hmm. don't jump into it. Because, you know, if you taste failure at, right at the onset, you can be demotivated. So if you think if, after I graduate, I think that is when I will give six months to myself to groom myself and then start looking, do that. There is absolutely no harm than jumping into it because others are doing it. Yeah. So very, very basic things, not rocket science at all. And I think, I'm, I'm sure if you think from that perspective, it is going to really help you. Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a pleasure talking to you. My pleasure too. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Chris. That brings us to the end of the second segment of Studio 60 Live. On the other side of the break, we will catch up new Eunice from Interns Me, who will help us unravel secrets for an interview preparation and grooming. Before that, let's take a quick break. Be my soul.